Well, hello again, folks, and welcome back to the cabin. About a month or so ago, I showed a video of where we were installing our brand new Kitchen Queen 380. The first meal cooked in that stove was the Thanksgiving feast, and everything came out awesome. So as you can well imagine, lots of questions and comments have come rolling in since then. A lot of people intrigued about the stove. They'd asked me if I could do a demonstration on how to cook with the Kitchen Queen. I like to cater to my subscribers as much as possible, so I'm going to put a little demonstration together for you all here today, show you how to get the best performance out of your Kitchen Queen. This has been a fantastic stove. I like it so much more than the 480 we had in New York. This is the perfect size for the cabin. This cabin here is 24 by 24 and it's got rooms upstairs and I have no problems heating it with the 380. The little glass door, what an upgrade that was for Kitchen Queen. Just fantastic. Very soothing to see the fire. And luckily for me, the way that the cabin is situated, I can check the status of the fire from my pillow. <laughs> no kidding. Just lean up and look. I don't have to get across the room and open the door and all of that. It's just fantastic. Now, the very first meal cooked in the stove was the Thanksgiving feast. Everything came out fantastic. And since we installed it, we've only used a propane oven one time and now it's every meal has been cooked in this. Yep. So I'm going to put this little demonstration for you all. Show you how to cook with your Kitchen Queen stove. Now the modern cook stoves like this are a lot easier to maintain than the antiques like the Crawfords and the Glenwoods. But there is still a little bit of a learning curve if you have no experience with using a wood-fired oven. So I'll show you a few tips that will help you through that learning curve. For starters, let's go over the levers and I'll explain what they're used for. This little lever right here controls your draft. Like any other stove, the more air you let to your fire, the faster it's going to burn, the more heat it's going to produce. When it's to the right, it's closed off entirely. To the left is wide open and it allows air through these little vent holes. I never leave any stove with the air vent wide open unattended. You can overheat your stove and it can ruin it. Okay, something to keep in mind. This little lever right here controls the air wash system. And as you can see, it works pretty good. This fire has been burning for about five weeks and the glass isn't all sooted up. I can't explain how it works, but I can show you that it does. I always keep this lever all the way to the left. I don't bother adjusting it. The older stoves that had glass doors and didn't have an air wash didn't take long before you couldn't even see a fire. If I burn the fire very low for a long period of time, the glass will get sooted up, but all it takes is a good hot fire and it will clean itself. Down here we have the ash pan, but I don't clean out the ashes very often. I find the stoves perform much, much better and hold the heat much longer if there's a good bed of ashes in the firebox. I just don't let it come up too high because there's an air space that the heat needs to go and circulate around the oven. Before I intend to cook with the oven, I just open up the firebox, I get in there with my poker and make sure that that air space beneath the oven is unobstructed. So let's look at the other levers on the stove here. Right here on the side of the stove, whenever I plan to cook with the stove, I pull this lever out. If I'm using my stove just as a heater, I'll always leave this lever pushed in. But if I want to bring my oven up to temp for baking, pulling it out will force the heat to circulate around the oven. The only thing to keep in mind, however, is if you open your firebox door to tend your fire with this lever pulled out, it will often force the smoke into your room. So just a good thing to keep in mind if you're going to tend your fire, 
push this back in to prevent the smoke from escaping the firebox. Back here, there's a lever. When the lever is pushed in, a small door opens in the back of the firebox, which allows the heat to escape directly out the chimney. Pulling that lever will change the pathway that the heat will follow before it exits out the chimney. It keeps it in the stove much longer, which makes it a much more efficient heater. The only time that I have that lever in the pushed position is when I'm kindling my fire or I'm tending my fire. Because if you open the firebox door with that lever pulled, you will often get a lot more smoke in your room. We want to avoid that. But once my fire has been kindled and I know it's stable, I pull that lever, keeps the heat in the stove, makes it a much more efficient heater that way. So let's do a quick overview of the levers and the basic operation of the stove before I talk about the more finicky aspects involved for cooking. Let's say I'm starting from scratch and I'm going to kindle a fire. I want the stove to draft as much as possible and as freely as possible. So to achieve that, I want to make sure this lever is pushed in and this lever is pushed in. Then once my fire has become stable and I'm burning some sizable wood and not depending on just the kindling to keep it going, I will pull that lever in the back to prevent all my heat from exiting out the chimney. If I'm going to be tending my fire, I'm going to push this lever in, push this lever in, which will allow the smoke to go right up the chimney. Then when I open my door to tend my fire, I don't have smoke pouring out. That's the basic operation of the Kitchen Queen. Let's talk about some cooking now. If I want to bake something in the oven, it's going to require a bit more forethought and planning than a conventional oven. People ask quite often, how do I regulate the oven temperature? I do that by regulating the temperature of my fire. I need a hotter oven, I need a hotter fire. Most of the things I cook, I bake at about 350 degrees, give or take. If I'm going to throw in a large object that's cold, or maybe a chicken that's partially frozen, I throw that in the oven and I close the door, that big cold object is going to lower the temperature of my oven for a little while. Just like it would if you took a hot object, put it in your cooler and close the lid. That would raise the temperature of your cooler for a little while. I try to keep that in mind before I bake something. If I'm going to throw in a big cold object in my oven, I might, and I plan on baking it at around 350, I might let my oven temp come up to around 425 or even 450, throw in the bird, close the door, the temp will come down, and get to right about the, ba the baking temperature that I want, we'll be good to go. If I want to cook something that needs to bake for an hour or more, like a large chicken or a turkey, I need to make sure that my fire is stable. And what I mean by that is I need to have some sizable chunks of wood that are dry and that are going to hold a good hot fire for a long period of time where it does not need to be replenished. I'm not going to stuff the firebox full of a bunch of small stuff like this that's going to flare up real hot and burn fast and then peter out and I need to replenish my fire. Nor am I going to go out to the woodshed and stuff my firebox full of wood that's ice cold, wet, or frozen. Because as soon as I do that, it's going to lower the temperature of my firebox, which will lower the temperature of my oven. And then I need to fiddle with the darn thing to get it back up to temp. I don't want to do that. And if you're baking something finicky like a loaf of bread, that kind of action could ruin it. The oven's at just over 225, I have a very slow fire going. To get this up for supper time, I need to stoke it up a bit. So let's do that. So first off, I'm going to open that. 
going to stir my coals around, make sure that slot under the firebox is unobstructed. Throw in a few pieces of nice dry wood. That should be all I need. I'm going to open that wide open for right now. I'm going to pull that to circulate the heat around the oven. Pull that so all my heat doesn't go right out the chimney. Now because I have the draft wide open, I'm not just going to walk away and forget about it. I'll keep pretty close attention to it till the fire is roaring to the point that I want it. Then I will lower that a little bit. When that gets up to temperature, we'll be ready for cooking. Using the cooktop is pretty self-explanatory. Of course, directly over the firebox will be the hottest surface. You can achieve the wide range of temperatures from high to low and simmer that you do with a conventional range simply by where you place your pan on the cooking surface. I'm going to use this clear kettle as an example. I'm directly over the firebox and you see that we're at a nice slow boil. I'll slide it over here away from the firebox and you can see it's already slowing down. So that will give you the same temperature choices that you have with a conventional range. You can have one pot boiling away, maybe a fry pan frying something, something else at a low simmer. And with these warming ovens, you can have something stand at a nice warm temperature. It's just fantastic. And once you get beyond the learning curve, you'll find it is just a joy to cook with this stove. I said before, the novelty never wears off. Now you see here, again, just in that time that it took me to talk, this is down. It's not boiling anymore. Put it over the firebox. Within a minute, that'll be back to a boil. Now you see the fire is burning good and hot. I'm going to go ahead and bring that down about halfway. And you can see the water's already starting to kick back up to a boil again. Yeah, <laughs> just fantastic. I'm going to get the kettles on for the dishwater for tonight. You hear that thing already perking up? When you have a good stable fire, it doesn't take long to boil water. These are two and a half gallon kettles. And again, with a good stable fire, they'll have them at a rolling boil in no time. If you didn't see our installation video and you want to know where we got our stove, this one came from Miller's Country Store in Burke, New York. They were just fantastic people to deal with. If I ever build another place and I want another stove, I'm going to be buying it from them. I'll put their contact info down below. Even if you don't live off-grid, having a wood-burning stove such as this one is just fantastic to have. I think I covered all of the questions that have come in to help you beyond the learning curve having a good stove, knowing how to operate it, being able to cook your food, heat your water, heat your home, all with the same fire, well, <laughs> that's just good backwoods logic. All the best to you folks. God bless. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did and you'd like to see more of The Cabin Life, please click the subscribe button so that you can follow along with future updates. All the best to you, and God bless.